Okay, here is an introduction to Jewel Beetle, the interface. And so I just want to go through and talk about all the different sections of the program. And I'll dive in a little deeper and talk about how to kind of rearrange the, um, the different panels. We call these panels. And so you'll notice that there's a panels uh, pull down up here. So let's get busy. And I guess we'll start at the top and kind of work our way down and around and so on. So up here at the top of the interface is the file menu. And, you know, these should all look pretty familiar if you've ever used Rhino. And if you haven't, these will get very familiar over time. But um, just like any other Windows program, we've got file, edit, view, and so on. So in file is new, open, import. These are all pretty self-explanatory. And um, two things of, of note are uh, save as template and reset template. So if you're a former Matrix user or a Rhino user and you want to have perhaps like your own layer structure, uh, perhaps you want to make a layer called Kento1 and why not have pink, you know, something bright. Um, you could set that up and then go up to file and save that as a template and Jewel Beetle would remember those settings uh, so you don't have to set that every single time. So um, at the bottom of this is your most recent files that were uh, accessed or saved or open and so there's just some and at any given time you just click on one and it'll open it right up. Okay so edit um, and up across the top unless it's one of our particular um, pull downs like panels or builders that's specific to uh, or tools that are specific to jewel beetle these otherwise are just like rhino this is every rhino function that's in the rhino curve menu is in our curve menu and you can just use your scroll wheel and scroll through those uh, for instance if we go to view and zoom this is a, a fly out to the right and there's all these buttons too and one thing that I want to go on record is saying uh, as far as this video goes this is an alpha version it's not even in beta so when you look up here and you see a bunch of missing icons, that's, um, I can't blame anybody but me. I'm the icon guy. So I have more work to do, which, um, you know what they say, software's never done. Okay, so if we come over to the panels, I'll come back to this, but these are the panels over here. Categories, shade mode, layers, projects, you can see all those here. You can also save different layouts, so you can mix the layout up and save that current one and then load the current one. And um, we have a couple uh, layouts that we've done, so you can switch from layout one to layout two. Um, these actually are the same uh, right now. But if you get it really messed up, and maybe I'll mess it up and show you, you can hit reset current layout and it will put it back to the way that we expect it with um, with Jewel Beetle. Okay, I'm just playing around while I'm talking here with the projects section, which we'll get to in a moment. Okay, so those are all the pull downs up here. If you come down to help, of course, you can click on about and see what version of Jewel Beetle you're running. This is 0.5, so it's alpha. Um, I'll even tell you real quick what this means. This uh, 0.5 instead of 1.0, which will be the first version. Uh, this is the year, 23. This is the 106th day of the year, so that's what build this is. And then this is the number of builds that day, 1008. Uh, might be two, three, four. Um, here's our company name, and here's the version of Rhino that is currently being run um, in its long form. 
down here you can see the same number here so at a glance you can always see what version you're on and we put the SR version here so that you can see that too version 7 SR 28 all right and I have five light man I have five licenses I should sell one of those okay so there's that there's also other things as far as troubleshooting goes um, well we have a forum uh, hopefully it'll be very active forum and um, there's a tutorial section which takes us to our uh, YouTube channel okay and so uh, online help view log files if you're having some sort of problem and we can't quite figure it out chances are it's in a in a log file and uh, of course I clicked about and that's how I got here okay let's move on the on the left side of the menu is um, O snaps okay so we have uh, all the different O snaps not vertex point these are all pretty and here's the overall on off so there are the the uh, O snaps that were active and are still selected and then if we click this and turn it back on those are still selected Next to that is construction. So we have project to seaplane, uh, planar, ortho, and then we have smart track, history, and history purge so that you can get to those real quickly up here. Here's grid snap. If you turn that on, you can just go in and pick which amount of snap that you want for that. And then these are the common tools that we feel you use over and over again. So there's join, split, trim, move, mirror, rotate, finger rail. Use a lot of those. Explode, um, edit points on, control points on, um, direction or the dir command, a center command, and then duplicate which is the Rhino command copy, but I prefer duplicate because that's what it does. Okay, um, beneath that is a ribbon of the current category that you're in. So the categories are here, curve, surface, solid, transform, gems, and then the rest of these down here. You can read them, I probably don't need to. So if you click on one of these categories, then the ribbon will switch up here and go to whatever section you're in now again at the time of making this video under setting uh, we don't have a head builder yet but we will and so there's only three buttons in here but watch for that to keep getting bigger and bigger as time goes on okay here's tools um, quite a few tools kind of running out of space same with curve we're almost out of room there at least on 1080p all the all the cool dudes with uh, billboards for monitors have plenty more room. Okay, so that's the category section. To the right of the common is command history. So let's go over here and we'll click on circle and I'll make a circle. And then we'll click on uh, surface and I'll make a plane. And then we'll go to solid. And there's a method to my map. Oh, I'm going to make a donut because I always make donuts. And you'll notice over here under command history, I clicked on circle, I clicked on plane, and I clicked on Taurus. And so we just populate your latest buttons. And that really is handy because it keeps you from having to bounce back and forth from category to category if you're doing a lot of the, the similar work. So if you click and draw a line and then you're going to use line a lot more and you're kind of working over here and you want another line you can just come up here and click on line if you happen to right click okay uh, which the right click of this is line both sides okay so you'll notice that if a function has been determined that it has a good left click right click then we show that on the quick tip here the tool tip and then we'll do line both sides. Well, what's cool is if you come up here and right click again, then it will repeat that right click. 
All right, so these work the same as here. Okay, don't don't be stealing my designs. This is this is my work in progress. Okay, below the categories are the shade modes. So depending on how you want this to look, okay, there's plastic and an outline. So there's ghost mode. So there's there's our display modes right here. And beneath that we have the layers command or panel rather. So we went ahead and made the layers menu, I feel, a lot easier to navigate through with, um, you know, compared to Rhinos. And over here you make the current layer, and it's indicated by the yellow, or you can click on the color. Whether you left click on the color or the name, that'll make that layer the current layer. We have hide and show. Okay, and I'll do videos where we really drill down and, and learn how to use this specifically. But um, besides these top 16 layers, okay, you can click the little arrow beneath it, and this will fly down, okay, and then we have more layers. Um, these layers, you can change the name and the color. You cannot change the name or the color of these up here. Sorry, there's uh, a reason for that. It's so that we can track all the objects and so on. This might be a good time to introduce the gear. So the gear right here is preferences. And each different panel has its own gear, if it's applicable. Uh, or you can come over and hit the universal gear and get to the same place uh, right down over here in the right. Okay, so if we click on the gear, then one thing that I want to show you is an option so that the layers, extra layers appear below. Now, if this is checked, then the extra layers appear below the layers menu. If I uncheck that, then they fly out to the right. So let me hit save, okay? And now you'll notice that instead of the little triangle being down here, it's over here. And so it just flies. This is personal preference. You might want these to fly out, make this your current layer. When I click out here, it's gone. And now I'm on the, the cool Kent layer. And um, if you're doing a lot of layer work and you want this to stay out because you're using a lot of these, you can also pin this layer, okay, or this fly out, and it'll stay. And then you can do your work, maybe, you know, select this, make a new color, put that on this layer, and so on. When you're done, if you just click the pin again, it'll disappear. Okay, beneath the layers menu is the projects, and there's a video that shows every single button and every single function of this, so I'm not going to get into it too much, but um, let's go ahead and delete that. If you click the blue button, this flies out, and you can select from all the multitude of project titles that you'll have, okay? And you can change the size of the thumbnails so that you can see things easier and so on. Uh, it goes kind of on and on. You can look for if you have pictures in here, then it'll show those and so on. So you can save everything that you want in projects that have to do with your project, whether it's an STL, a JPEG, a PDF, doesn't matter. You can save it all in here. And these just help you find things um, in particular categories or types. Having said that, I'm going to go ahead and click on number 11, I think, is the one I wanted to use for this demo. And so here's a ring. All right. And the next section down is properties. So if you select one item, 
then properties will tell you what you selected. 6.4 by 6.4 by 4, which is almost a one carat center stone. If you want to go ahead and select everything and get it over with, then we'll take inventory and you can see that we have um, the 6.4 round. We have 10 1.4s, uh, 6 1.3s, 6 1.2s, etc., etc. So there you go. And um, that's that's how that works. So at any given time, now if you have an object or a yeah object or objects that are really maybe you have a ton of um, pave or a bunch of really heavy meshes or something to that effect and every time you select it keeps you know showing you this and showing you this and, and maybe it's even thinking about it a little bit um, you can hit the pause button or stop button actually and then when I select things it doesn't bother showing you the properties of that now it's usually really pretty snappy so I I typically roll with it on and um, if we select just the gems, then there you go. Okay. We, of course, have the command line, um, in my opinion, up at the top, where it should be. But that's debatable, I guess. And uh, you can switch to different viewports down here. Or, of course, you can double-click and go from viewport to viewport as well. And then, uh, well, I went over this. If for some reason there's a rumor uh, that you hear that says, oh man, there's a new update and you've been working in Jewel Beetle all day long and you haven't seen an update, well, you can check for an update right here. So if we click that, I am on the latest version. Okay. So, um, if there were, happened to be, a new version that came out, um, then it would come up and say, hey, do you want to, uh, it would download it and ask you if you wanted to install it. Okay, it happens a lot on the alpha version. I can tell you that. You get a few a day uh, when we're working on it. So there you go. Um, to the... Um, To the right of that are coordinates um, X, Y, and Z for this particular uh, line. And so um, you can see those changing. I honestly don't use this too much, but some people do. To the right of that is the current layer. Okay, so let's, you'll notice that I'm on that current layer. Let's switch to Metal 2. Okay, and with nothing selected, all right, then the current layer is displayed here, okay? And there's no objects on the current layer, thus the zero. If I come over here and select something, then it says, oh, hey, there's one object, and it's on the Kent 01 layer, okay? When I click off again, it goes back to the current layer with no objects. If I right-click... So what's nice is, is if you say, well, what layer is this gem on? I'm kind of having trouble seeing if it's, you know, gem 2 or gem 3. Uh, which layer is it on? So when I miss that, when I pick that one, it's uh, one gem on gem 3. Okay? So that's what this shows is uh, how many objects and what layer they're on if they're selected. Okay, that's uh, really about it as far as the interface, uh, other than builders. So I haven't run a builder yet, so let's do that real quick. The builders show up over here. Uh, over, uh, below that is who's logged in to Jewel Beetle, and of course it's me. Hi. And uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go over here and say File New, and there we go. And let's just go to Gems and click on the Gem Builder. And here comes a gem. I'll give you a quick, quick overview of this one. Uh, you can just slide the slider and pick whatever size you want, or type if you want a five millimeter, type five, and then we maintain the percentage of uh, an ideal cut for rounds. And there you go. 
Um, again, there will be way more information on how all this works. So I'm just going to hit uh, Enter to stop the builder. Okay. And then if we come over here, we, of course, have the good old F6 menu. Okay. So if we want a cutter for our gem, we click Cutters. And there they are. And here's some control handles out here so we can make this bigger, smaller. All right. And of course we have preset library items. So once you're in a builder, if you come over to the book, you could reset that builder or you can say, I want to browse the presets and maybe you want one of these cool heart burrs with a ball down on the end of there and say okay and so we'll load that from the pre-existing library. You of course are welcome to mix up your own and save them in that same library. Okay so here's a builder again once a builder is you're finished with it then you go ahead and just hit enter or right click or hit the space bar. In Rhino those are all the same. Okay, the next thing that I want to show is you can rearrange this setup. Now, builders are always going to come in to the right in our stock setup, but if you double click on any of these panel, remember these are panels, there's builders, properties, projects, the ones you see here. If you double click it, you can pop it out of there and move it okay and you could put this on any screen that you want if you have multiple monitors you could park it over somewhere else okay if we right click on this title then you can very quickly dock it left or right so if I say dock right then it goes back over and docks here okay if you right click on layers and want to put that somewhere else you can also say float so it's either double click the title or click float and that'll float it out of here okay um, if I double click that again then it comes back over here but now it's below the properties and I, I really am not used to that so I don't like it so I can right click here and say position and I'm just pausing over that and I can say move up move down move to the bottom move to the top so I'm going to move that up one and then I'm going to right click here and say position and move it up again and here is the default layout now like I say if you get this just really kind of wacky and maybe uh, if we move this one up uh, well, then you can come over to panels and you can say reset the current panel layout and it'll put it back the way it usually is when uh, Jewel Beetle starts. Again, if you want to do your own layout and save it, you're welcome to do that. So that's how this right click works here. And don't worry if um, inadvertently maybe you pop this one out and you're like, oh, I don't want that there, and you close it. <laughs> um, that's kind of a bummer, isn't it? But if you come over to Panels, you'll notice that Projects is unchecked because it's been closed. So if you just check that again, and then I could right-click and say Dock Left. And then if it's still not quite right, it might be faster to just come up here and say Reset the Current Panel Layout. All right, in the last little bit of this video, let me go ahead and get rid of this. I just want to talk about some of the features that we have added to Jewel Beetle that are our own unique features as far as that goes. So besides, you know, the typical Rhino functions, curved surface solid, let's go ahead and talk about in Transform, we have Auto Flow, which um, is like flow along surface, only much more powerful. Okay, so we've got that in there. A lot of these other functions are, are Rhino ones. Um, in gems, we have a gem loader, we have gem on curve, we have a gem transform. 
so you can move gems all at one time along its own axis or um, rotation and so on. Uh, we've got gems to cutters where we can actually take the gems and make them into cutters and and uh, increase or decrease the size of the gem so you can use those just as a cutter. Uh, we've got a gem map so when your design is done you can map that out and we've got copy to gems where you can have functions that are objects that uh, can be translated up to uh, different gems and we'll have videos on every single one of these so make sure you check back at our YouTube channel so you can see all these here's a gem outline okay and you can even have a round gem and then pick a different gem shape for the outline of it so you, you know maybe you're gonna make a cushion halo around a round gem you can change that up setting we have bezel under bezel and gallery rail alright so far there will be more coming like I say uh, under tools, we have finger rail, outside finger rail, profile placer, metal weights, all right, and uh, we have gem view and surface view are very pop, uh, po powerful tools, and um, you can see all the builders here if you want to see um, each and every one. Um, and then uh, under cutters, we have uh, cutters. We have, there's gems to cutters again. And then, of course, cut to finger rail. And then sub D, we have uh, all the Rhino functions for sub D. Okay, so there's Jewel Beetle. There will be more buttons coming, more functions. Um, can't wait to get um, more of this done and have it be called version one. But. Um, this is what we have. We're real excited about it. And uh, there you go.